Okay, so the first question is, was it hard to adapt to their living style? And the answer, the quick answer is yes. The, the thing is, everybody will have a hard time adapting to any different type of cultures. Even within our own culture, there's different subcultures. If you live at your friend's house, it's going to be kind of awkward. Uh, they do different things, and we all look through the lens of our own uh, worldview. It's called being egocentric. And um, for my family moving to Java, the island of Java, uh, next to the capital of Indonesia, Jakarta, um, it was very difficult. Everything's different. The the language, the the way that people interact together, the um, the way you pay for things, um, the the weather, everything's very different. And um, it is hard to adapt, but it's it's really fun, actually. And I hope all of you get a chance to go to a different culture, experience it, and not go in thinking that because you're an American, you have it all figured out and your way is correct because that's setting yourself up for failure. So whenever you go to a different country, you really need to try to look through the lens of, of their worldview through their eyes. Um, be learners watch, ask questions, and um, and do as they do. And things will be a lot easier in the long run. So this is an interesting question. It's, what is the age you become an adult there? Uh, for Papua, you just become an adult really quick. Life is really hard. Um, you have to do everything from a young age. And um, yeah, people grow up really quick there. Um, Specifically for Java, there's a, a fun ceremony called um, Upachara Kahitanan. And um, really that, that's circumcision ceremony uh, for boys specifically. There, there is female mutilation there. But um, if you don't know what circumcision is, ask Mr. Matt. He'll, Mr. Shaco, he'll, he'll tell you. He'll draw you a picture. But... Boys, anywhere from six or four to five to seven or so, usually it's six, um, have a big ceremony of becoming a man and they they get circumcised. Not in front of people, but uh, usually it's done before and after this big ceremony where all the people get together. It's a very communal society, so the whole neighborhood, all the families get together. And um, before they're dancing, they're usually riding horses and stuff. And after, the boys are usually just sitting down receiving gifts. Um, but that's when Indonesians become men. This one's funny. Uh, probably something I would have asked when I was in high school. What is the drinking age there? Um, there isn't really a drinking age. One time I saw a kid who was probably seven on a scooter, smoking a cigarette, texting on a cell phone with his three other brothers on it. Um, so yeah, they don't really have a drinking age. If it's legal, it's a predominantly Muslim country. So you, theoretically, it's supposed to be dry. But there's a lot of areas that, um, that you are able to buy alcohol and consume it. Usually, if people really want booze, they make it themselves. And in Papua, they make it out of uh, rice, sometimes coconut, call it jungle juice. Um, very strong, and it can be a big problem. But yeah, the legal drinking age is whenever you can afford it, really. The problem is, for most youngins out there, is they sniff glue. Uh, it's called anak um, ibon. And it's a really big problem. Kids are high all, all around town, and people, the store owners would still sell the glue even though they know that they're going to use it for uh, sniffing. And it really messes them up and oftentimes kills them. So don't sniff glue. So are things cheap or expensive there? Uh, so on the island of Java, they have all sorts of things. They have an Ikea, they have Starbucks and McDonald's and... Uh, mostly in the bigger cities, stuff like that. And things are about the same price, probably a little bit more expensive as what you find here. Unless you're buying street food, which you can get a whole meal of fried rice, nasi goreng, for like 
a dollar or less and it's a big meal and it's really good um, when you go to Papua you can uh, I go to the the village market the Pasar to, to buy food um, usually vegetables early in the morning buy fish and other meat um, it's that is relatively cheap but everything has to be uh, shipped there they don't really produce anything besides vegetables that they grow or the really sad cows that they butcher so oftentimes things are a lot more expensive um, but there isn't really entertainment stuff to any entertainment stuff at all out there so um, it's easy not to spend money when you're living out there this kind of goes with the drinking one what age could you drive things um, so kids drive all the things. Usually it's like scooters, mopeds, uh, sometimes motorcycles. Not often are there cars. Usually if there's a car, it's for a rich person. But um, yeah, as long as their parents are okay with it, and oftentimes they are, uh, kids very young, I've seen kids seven or younger, uh, drive scooters with their whole family on it. Um, they they don't really have other things that they drive. I guess they fly planes and there's construction equipment and stuff, but um, usually that's for people who are working. Okay, how different is Indonesia and the USA? And is there a nursing home there? Um, I'm just gonna assume the nursing home bit refers to the difference between Indonesia and US because they're very different cultures and and yeah, basically everything is different between the two. But as far as nursing homes go, they don't really have nursing homes. Uh, it's a communal society, so it's very, along with a lot of other Asian countries or um, South Pacific um, cultures, it's family and communal. So they really need their, their kids to look after them and they expect that so everyone not only their kids but also just extended family so if there's a need financially or um, help with anything there's always family around they often live very close um, so that they can help uh, with whatever financial obligation or thing that needs to be done um, also you don't really see a whole lot of people live uh, too old the mortality rate is pretty high especially with young kids and older adults. So um, if I often see people who look like they're 80 or 90, but really they're only like 60 or 70, uh, just because life's hard and it really wears on them. So yes, very different. No nursing homes. Okay, I'm going to spitfire some. Um, what's the music like? In Papua, it's just tropical. It's like somebody... Um, not like um, Jimmy Buffett or anything, but it's like somebody got a keyboard and then just made synthesizer music and it's really fun. Um, and they blare it all over the place. The schooling, um, unfortunately the, the schooling system is terrible. Um, in the villages, the teachers are usually from Java and they don't even go into the, the village. They, they stay in the, the towns, get paid, show up once a year to do the, the year testings and um, usually write all the answers on the board to make them look good. So it's, it's really terrible and almost non-existent. Um, so just appreciate your schooling system and teachers. Um, do they play basketball? Yeah, um, they do. They're terrible. It's really funny. Uh, but they play soccer and indoor soccer, futsal, um, and volleyball. And they have a special uh, martial art called um, Shorin Ru. Not Shorin Ru. Um, what was the only thing about it? Okay, I can't remember what it's called. Um, but a special karate type thing that's really cool. Um, how many hours are school? School, um, the kids that go to school it's not very long they it's maybe like five four or five hours a day but they have school on Saturdays and they have a lot of holidays 
call it red letter days. It's like 30 or something throughout the year. Um, but they don't really have summer break or anything. They, they have a long Christmas break and a long Eid break. Um, but other than that, they're just in school all the time, uh, six days a week. Um, okay, their houses. The, the ones in Jakarta area, it's like skyscrapers and the city is sinking. So a lot of the, um, rural slums are just like tin shacks basically, but, um, in outside of Jakarta, it's just concrete, normally, um, concrete walls. Um, usually they build rooms at a time. There's a, you walk in and there's a little living room that's for neighbors and friends and stuff. Um, but then they have a room, like all the rest of their house is inside of that. So they can put up curtains so they can always have people over, but not really in the house. Uh, not very much like Western uh, houses. Not all of them have tiled floors, but you don't you don't have carpet there at all. It's all either concrete or dirt or um, tile. Um, and then the special houses in Papua are called Honai. They're just huts. They're uh, they have a grass roof. They're in a circle, um, and there's always a fire pit right in the middle of it. Okay, this is a fun one. Uh, what do they have? Pets. Um, not really. Generally, they they eat all the animals. Like they eat dog, cats. Um, if you can catch them, they'll probably eat them. But they're gnarly. Um, some people have dogs. Some people have cats. But generally, they're they're seen as unclean, so they don't. Um, and a lot of people are hungry, so they eat them. But there's some crazy animals. Like uh, there's a cassowary, which is kind of like. Um, Kevin from the movie Up. It, it has, it looks like an emu kind of, really big legs and velociraptor um, claws and they, they've been known to kill people. They look like a dinosaur, look it up, cassowary. And then there's tree kangaroos which don't look like kangaroos at all. Um, and then there's um, not many marsupials, there's a lot. Uh, the best pet is a pig and um, they use it as currency almost. And it's actually worth more than wives. Yes, plural. Um, it's, it's pretty sad, but that's how they, they do business out there. This is an interesting one. How do people interact with each other? Um, it's very communal. So it, it's a lot of touchy-feely. Like you'll see men holding hands or um, like with inner inner um, connected fingers, um, you see people just holding on around their shoulders or touching their elbows, and um, they they do fun handshakes in the the tribes where they take your fingers like that. I can't do it while holding the phone, but you put one in there and you pinch it and you pull it back, and um, it makes a snapping sound. So that's they'd like to do that. Um, it's very, they're all very happy, um, loud, like to get together, um, but they don't really see outsiders as part of their group. Um, so it's, that's the communal aspect. It's people that they know, um, and trust in interiors of Papua. They, they don't trust, uh, people from other villages. They, there's a lot of generational wars that have been happening one side kills one side um so they get mad and they do revenge killing back and forth or if someone dies they think that one even though they were sick they the other people cast a spell on them or something so there's revenge killings that lasts so long um and it's really sad so a lot of the times the people don't really get along it's getting better now but um, it still happens now and then. And yeah, there's cannibalism. Um, definitely 30 years ago it happened regularly, but um, now I haven't heard of anybody doing that. Okay, the weather questions. Um, is it hot or cold? Um, it, it was, 
So in the mountains of Papua, it can get kind of cold, a little chilly. It, it goes from sea level to 16,000 feet uh, in a few miles. So uh, there's a permanent glacier up there. So sometimes it gets very cold. Um, but on the lowlands, it gets to 120 easy with 100% humidity. So generally, it's just hot all the time. Um, and and it rain. There's seasons. It's rainy season or uh, not very rainy, but still rainy. Uh, so it rains all the time, and there there are no seasons really. It, the sun sets at six and rises at six every day all year. And um, the only noticeable difference is that the um, winds change. And I only know that because I fly airplanes at the higher altitudes. So that's the only thing. And are there any islands that are more unique than others? Yeah, all of them are very unique. You, you go to um, Sumatra and Bali and uh, Java. Um, all of them are... There's um, Komodo, where you have the Komodo dragons, and Papua. They're all very, very different um, and unique in their own special way. And even on the island of Papua, you, there's um, Raja Ampat, which is a... Um, really beautiful diving area uh, on the northern uh, coast and um, there's the mountains and the lowlands and the beaches and there's so many different in the and in, on a glacier on top of the mountain on the highest one um, so there's all sorts of things to make each island very unique from the other ones and then unique places in each island okay food um, so, like I said before, on Java, there's a lot of different um, Western food places that you can eat. Um, it tastes a little bit different. There's no pork because it's a Muslim country. Uh, See, so there's no bacon. And they don't even say hamburger because it makes it seem like there's ham in it. Um, but generally, if you go to an American restaurant, you'll get something similar to um, what you would expect. Uh, as far as Indonesian food goes, though, there's a lot of fried rice, which is really good. It's called nasi goreng, and there's probably 30 different types of fried rice, and they're all very good. And you can get them on street stands um, all over the place. It costs a dollar, sometimes 50 cents for a big portion. They have sate ayam, which is um, chicken sate. It's uh, like a peanut sauce on chicken that's cut up really small, and they grill it on sticks. You probably heard of that. It's pretty com or uh, famous from there. And then my favorite probably is uh, it's called soto, which is just a chicken soup. Um, it's really good, and there's all sorts of unique uh, to here at least fruits. Like there's uh, rambutan which is a uh, hair fruit. So it looks like it's red with hairs all over it and it tastes kind of like a, a grape almost. It's very sweet. Um, and then uh, Mr. Matt or Mr. Shaco probably told you about how I gave him durian flavored things. Durian is a very famous fruit. It's, I don't know why it's considered a fruit. It tastes like uh, garlic and gym socks and more like meat than fruit but um, people love it out there and it's very expensive um, and then pig in Papua is very very good they kind of Hawaiian style they'll wrap hot rocks in banana leaves and then bury the the pig in after they kill it obviously in the hole and then put these rocks with banana leaves on top of it and it's called a bakarbatu which is um, just like a pig feast and they do that a lot on ceremonies and big deal things um, other than that a lot of rice and a lot of chicken don't get beef in Papua because it doesn't taste good okay so two questions in one what was your favorite thing about Indonesia and what do you miss the most um, it I just love the culture it's laid back there it's a simpler lifestyle there isn't all the the culture and or, or it, like the so two questions in one what was your favorite thing about indonesia and what do you miss the most and i'd have to say just the people 
I really like the people. It's a simple way of life and they're all very happy generally. Um, just really nice, really miss them. Um, and then the way of life is just simpler too. There isn't much of a need or desire culturally to, to have a lot or keep getting more and more things. So, um, I, I really miss those things. And I like that about Indonesia. Um, the, just everything about it is nice. I do miss when I'm there, friends and family and food. Um, but I could, I could probably live forever in, in Papua and, and be happy as long as Mr. Shaco comes and visits me once in a while. Okay. Last question. And probably the most important one that you've asked is, did I see a monkey? And no, I didn't. No monkeys on Papua. I did see a monkey, a lot of monkeys in Bali. That was pretty fun. Um, but I don't trust them. Never trust a monkey.